My video for today will be how to remove plastic finger wheels off of rotary dial phones. This will apply to Western Electric, ITT, Stromberg Carlson, and Northern Electric. Automatic Electric has a different technique to remove their finger wheels off of their dials. This is a Western Electric telephone. And again, this has got an old dial in it versus the newer style dials, but the finger wheels are the same for the most part. If it had the original finger wheel, it would be slightly different with a raised, um, or it'd be a two piece. It would be raised and then there'd be a plastic in there and a number card below, behind the plastic. This is molded as one piece. However, removing the finger wheel is the same regardless of the age of the dials, plastic. In the plastic, there's a hole down here between the nine and the zero right there where I have the paper clip. So you run this around to where it will no longer turn. You push the paper clip in and release the latch and continue to turn the, plat the finger wheel and you have it removed. What you're doing is re pushing down the latch right here with the, the uh, paper clip. If you have a tool, an ice pick that's got a very small hole, that is the best way to do it. Uh, this is a hard way of doing it, but it is what most people have. So again, I'll show as much as I can, being it's a clear piece of plastic, the hole for the release is right here. If the camera will be cooperative. This will work on most any of the number seven, eight, and nine type dials. This particular dial is a very old dial and if I wanted to remove this, I, I have a tool that's got the correct nut uh, size on it. And I could turn this around and remove this unit, which in this case, I don't need to. Now, if I wanted to replace the black number ring, I would remove the finger stop and I would remove this and there's three screws to hold the number ring on. This telephone is what I refer to as a BTH, and that's not the best thing happening. This telephone is, is really beat up, um, and I'll let you figure out what the BTH means. I will be junking the receiver, plastics, and the housing, most likely the number ring, and I'll be putting new plastics on. The handset cord will be given a bath. I will put this in a cloth uh, bag and then run that through the washing machine as I've talked about in other videos. This telephone, um, again, is a really bad phone. This particular one is what is called a 502 set. Um, 500s are very common the a b or c d that depends on the vintage of it and, and inside components in order to gain access inside the phone there are two screws one down here by the bottom foot and one in the back removing these screws or untightening them until they no longer um, well you can pull them out because the screws generally do not come out on western electric phones you have to put a little additional effort into it and there's no reason to take the screw out. ITT and Stromberg, they just fall out because they didn't have a double thread on them. So with the screws loosened, you can just simply remove the shell and you've got this down inside the telephone. This particular one has an exclusion switch and it has a six conductor cord. We're not going to get into what is unique about this phone other than um, I'm going to keep it as a 502 and it will have the exclusion switch in it and I will clean the cord 
or put a new for it on and then it'll be a color i don't know what yet this is how you get into the phone they're simple once you're in it um, you can work on it there is a screw on each side to hold the dial in um, and you can loosen that up and pull this out i'm not going to because i have shown some of this techniques on another video so i'll replace the shell which this shell was not the correct shell for this phone uh, the housing was stamped out to be modular this telephone was originally a hardwired phone so it's wrong in many cases it's also got rust on the feet which is quite common and this telephone was made in September of 64. I'll put the, to replace the finger wheel, you put it back on and make sure this latch is not bent down. You get it to where it feels right, and then you just turn it and it's locked on. And you've got yourself a phone with the finger wheel restored. A 2500 set has um, a window on the face plate and again a finger a uh, paper clip will work fine to remove the clear window if you have a western electric or a stromberg the clear windows are the same size if you have an ITT, they're slightly wider top to bottom, and they will not fit in a Western or Stromberg phone correctly. However, this would fit in an ITT phone fine. And again, in order to gain access to the phone, and this was originally born as a rotary dial telephone, but they refurbished it and turned it into a 2500. So you gain access in the bottom this way. Also, the feet was rusted on it at one time, so they had replaced the feet. It, this was an aftermarket job because of the rivets, I can tell by that. And, you know, the Bell system and others recycled their phones because why throw away a good phone? So you can tell that the touchtone pad has an adapter, and these were made by western or somebody to take a touchstone pad and mount it where a rotary dial would normally go and this is a 425 network made for a rotary phone so there is down here some harris dracon uh, spade to spade uh, connectors it's just the plastic snap on over the spades that was common and those are very difficult to find. So if you have a phone that was converted, there'll either be a terminal board in here with screws or those. And this was another way that they had uh, recycled the base of the phone and gave it more life. Uh, this is not unusual. This was done probably by a Bell system shop, not necessarily by Western Electric. And then to put the housing back on, of course, you reverse the process. Relatively simple. And I say that, but anyway, it is relatively simple. And this phone, because it was a conversion, and I have lots of 2500s, I might put this back to being a 500 set, um, since I have lots of plastics for rotary dial phones. The next phone is a trim line. This is the handset only. I do not have a base right here in my shop. I'd have to dig one out. That's okay. Where it says trim line, depending on who made it, this could have a clear window and a metal uh, light deflector because there's an actual light bulb in some of the trim lines this one here is new enough that it'll be an led and it'll light up green but in order to remove the cover off of it you have to gain access to the screws and by doing that again it's no different than a plastic window except this one is plastic but it meet matches the color of the housing 
So you got two screws, and this applies to most everybody's um, telephone set, uh, unless you get into the very late post divestiture. And frankly, most of the post divestiture phones, I in, uh, deposit them in green bins that has a flip-flop lid on it, and then every Friday, they uh, go away. So this is what the inside of a modern trim line handset looks like. The older ones still had the flexible printed board, and up here would have the lamp in it, the eight volt lamp. Um, and they were, looked somewhat the same, but the, uh, the network boards were uh, printed differently. This has got a modern touch tone pad as where the other ones are mechanical. And um, so depending on the age of the phone or who made it, the insides will look different. I really discourage anybody from taking these trim lines apart. I've done probably a hundred of them or more in my lifetime and I can do it and put them back together in no time at all. But they're kind of challenging. The older they get, the more screws there are and the more retaining clips that there are. And this flexible circuit board is not aging well. So removing it out of this phone is not gonna hurt it, but some of the earlier phones, they're becoming so brittle that if you take the phone apart to clean it, you could end up with broken traces on the board. Um, so unless you really need to take it apart, I highly recommend that you don't. Um, to put it back together, of course, you just have to get it, you know, the housing put back on and then tighten the screws down and put the uh, number card holder or the name placker in it. Uh, Western, ITT, and Stromberg made them with their name on it. So this particular one says Bell Trimline, but they could say Stromberg ITT, or they could be just blank. So that's way on the base that the this sits on or the wall unit is the same exact clear window um or it may have a, 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 a trim a name tag in it and again you remove that there's two screws that lifts the cover off of the base so once you got one you have the other for a 2554 telephone set which is this particular wall set the screws are below the touch tone pad. So you have to remove the plastic window and you can use your paper clip for that. And then there's paper usually with the phone number on it. And then there's screws below that and you remove tight, untighten those screws. And then in this case, I didn't tighten it back down, but you can remove the shell. And now you have access to the inside of the telephone. That's pretty much common amongst all of the manufacturers of these kind of wall phones. Um, so there's no big secret there. And then, of course, if you put the paper tag back in or make your own, that's fine. And then you can put the plastic window in. Um, and again, these windows, Western and Stromberg are the same. ITT is slightly different. Um, so when you find windows loose, you may be surprised that some will work and some won't. Uh, 